Here we're gonna look at a pretty interesting viewer suggested problem. So our goal is to find all natural numbers n such that the absolute value of two to the n plus five to the n minus 65 is a perfect square. So I think there are maybe some hints built into this, like maybe 65 and five are both multiples of five, obviously. So you might wanna look at this mod five to get started. Another thing that is like maybe a little bit interesting but requires some knowledge of number theory is that two is a primitive root mod five. So that's kind of a hint as well that you should maybe look mod five. Also, 65 is one more than a power of four. So that's probably helpful as well. Okay, so first off, we wanna notice when is the interior of this absolute value positive and when is it negative? Because we'll have to look at each of those cases separately. So let's go ahead and notice that the absolute value of two to the n plus five to the n minus 65, well, that's gonna be equal to negative the inside of this absolute value whenever the interior is negative. So in other words, this is gonna be 65 minus two to the n minus five to the n. And this actually occurs for the cases when n equals one or two. And you can check that pretty easily. Well, if n equals one, well, notice you've got two plus five minus 65, that's clearly negative. The same thing happens when n equals two, you get negative 36 in there. Taking the absolute value, you get 36. So in fact, you get a perfect square at that point, which we'll note later. So next, we'll look at all the other cases, which would be the case when n equals three or greater. Notice immediately if n equals three, we have five cubed, which is 125. Well, that outpaces 65 very, very quickly. So here we've got this is two to the n plus five to the n minus 65 for all values of n bigger than or equal to three like that. So let's maybe look at case number one, and this would be n equals one or two, and see if we get any perfect squares there. Well, we already noticed we got one at n equals two, but let's check n equals one. So if we've got n equals one, we need to look at 65 minus two minus five. Well, that's 65 minus seven, which is 58. So that's not a perfect square. So I'll just put an X next to it. We cannot use that. So let's look at the n equals two case. We get 65 minus four minus 25. Like I said, that's equal to 36. 36 is clearly six squared, so we're good to go there. Okay, so now let's look at our next case. So I'll call it case two, and that's when n is bigger than or equal to three. And obviously in that case, we need to look at two to the n plus five to the n minus 65. And again, using those number theory hints that are built into the setup of the problem, maybe we should work mod five. I guess we could have done that up here as well, but there are only two cases, so those are easy to check by hand. So let's go ahead and reduce this mod five and see what we get. So we've got two to the n plus five to the n minus 65. That's gonna be congruent to two to the n modulo five. So now let's look at values of two to the n mod five. So let's say we've got n here, and then we have two to the n. Now by Fermat's little theorem, we need only to look at the values of n between one and five minus one, or one and four. So we've got n equals one, two to the one is equal to two. So that's pretty clear. If we have n equals two, two to the two is four. Then n equals three, we have two to the three is eight, but eight is equal to three mod five. And then finally, two to the power of four is 16, but that is one mod five. But now we wanna make a very, very important observation. And that is that four and one are the only perfect squares mod five. So in other words, three and two are not perfect squares mod five. And we can actually check that very, very easily. Let's say over here we've got M and then here we have M squared. Let's maybe go ahead and notice that we're doing mod five here and add that here as well. So we won't worry about calculating zero squared because obviously that 
thing that we're interested in is not congruent to zero mod five. So we'll just calculate one, two, three, and four squared mod five. So one squared is clearly one, two squared is clearly four, three squared, well that's nine, but nine is the same thing as four mod five. 4 squared is 16, but 16 is the same thing as 1 mod 5. So a chart like that is sufficient to show that 4 and 1 are the only perfect squares mod 5. But let's see what that tells us. That tells us that our n values have to be 2, 4, or really any even number. Again, by Fermat's little theorem, this is going to start repeating. So, in other words, this right here tells us that n has to be even. Okay, so let's maybe take that fact, move it to the top, and then we'll finish this off. On the last board, we determined that if n was equal to 2, our goal object was equal to 6 squared. So it was a perfect square. In other words, we got a solution in that case. Now we want to suppose that n is bigger than or equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 times m. In other words, it's even. We showed that on the last board that it had to be even. Furthermore, since n is bigger than or equal to 3, that means m is bigger than or equal to 2. And actually, there's kind of a switchover point here where m is equal to 2 or 3 gives us one method of solution, but if it's strictly bigger than 3, we have another method of solution. And that's based off of the fact if m is equal to 2 or 3, i.e. n is equal to 4 or 6, then 2 to the n is less than 65. But otherwise, we have 2 to the n is bigger than 65. So like I said, it'll be useful to look at those cases separately. So let's maybe look at case number 1, and that would be m equals 2 and m equals 3. And since this is really just two cases, we can just check those by hand. So let's check this by hand. If m equals 2, then that means n equals 4. But that means our object here is 16 plus 625 minus 65. And I'll let you guys check that that is equal to 24 squared. So we've got another solution in this case. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and circle this one along with this one. Now next, let's check the case when m equals 3, which is the same thing as n equals 6. And in this case, we'll get 64 plus 5 to the 6 minus 65. But then you can easily check that this is not equal to a perfect square. So I won't do that, but I'll let you guys check that by hand. Okay, so now we need to move into our second case, and that is m is strictly bigger than 3, which means m is bigger than or equal to 4. And this will finish it off. So if m is bigger than or equal to 4, then that means we have 2 to the n is going to be equal to 2 to the 2m by our definition of n, or really by our writing n as an even integer. But that's going to be bigger than or equal to 2 to the 8, like that. But then you can check that 2 to the 8 is 128. So like I said, this is 128. But now rewriting this slightly, that sets up an inequality. So notice that this tells us that 2 to the n minus 65 is bigger than or equal to 128 minus 65, which is clearly bigger than 0. OK. So what that tells us is that if we take 2 to the n plus 5 to the n minus 65, we can get rid of this 2 to the n minus 65, and we've pushed the thing smaller. So this is bigger than 5 to the n. Now that may not seem super helpful, but let's recall that this n is equal to 2 times m, so that this is in fact 5 to the m quantity squared. Okay. 
Now let's work towards the other direction. And we can work towards the other direction by doing some replacements. So we know subtracting 65 will give you something that is smaller than adding the number one, for instance. So this is less than, and I'm gonna replace my n's with two times m as while we're at it. So this is gonna be 25 to the m plus four to the m plus one, like that. But then you can notice that four is one less than the square root of 25, Square root of 25 is five, so maybe we can continually push that bigger into something that's factorable. And in fact, we can do that. Notice this is gonna be less than 25 to the M plus two times five to the M plus one. But then that object factors very, very nicely. That's the same thing as five to the M plus one quantity squared. So next, maybe if we set capital N equal to five to the M, notice that we have two to the little n plus five to the little n minus 65 is strictly between capital N squared and capital N plus one squared. So it's in between two consecutive perfect squares, which means it cannot be a perfect square. So let's maybe summarize that down here with no more solutions. So let's see, we got two solutions, n equals four and n equals two, giving us 24 squared and six squared. And then this calculation right here shows us that there are no more solutions. And that's a good place to stop.